Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Since the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. You'll turn with me please also to the book of Mark. I want to read this same story and a little bit of uh, maybe a change, a little altering from Mark's view. Mark the 14th chapter and the third verse. Being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, Whithersoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priests to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Nice verse. Verily I say unto you, whithersoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be, sp be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto chief priest to the church. I like to speak today upon this thought of a memorial of praise or of action. A memorial of praise or of action. Brother Enzi, would you pray? You may be seated in the name of the Lord. The footsteps of Jesus in the sands of time found him going back to those that he loved so much. I read in the final hours in the days of the life of Christ, coming home from his crusades and miracles, he was seeking out those that he loved and cared for so dearly. He was coming home to uh, see Lazarus and Mary and Martha and Simon to be with them in his house. He wanted to draw near to them in those final hours. He wanted to be close to them in, in a very real and personal way. Uh, it is not without significance that 
Christ wanted to be nigh unto those that he started his ministry with. Those that uh, he loved so much in the beginning that in the end, the end of his fleshly ministry here as a man in the flesh, he was drawing near to them. Oh, how he wanted to be with them and talk with them. He came by Simon's house and came by for a supper dinner and all the disciples gathered in and they made a table and prepared a place for him that they might fellowship. I don't find in the scripture that they did anything out of the norm in the ordinary. Jesus had come by many times before and he had come by many times after that again. And they just sat down to a normal dinner, nothing out of the ordinary. But if they only knew what time it was and why he had come by and what was about to happen, I, I promise you it would have been the best dinner that they could have ever put together. I tell you that Mary and Martha would have prepared something that would have been out of the ordinary. They would have got the best cider that they had and there would have been a whole different feeling in that room. But you know, it's just that way about people. They just feel like the good things are just going to go on and on and on. Our mind cannot comprehend the end. We, we don't, that's, uh, that's so far beyond our understanding. We preach about it. We tell sinners about it. We testify about it. But as far as the realization of, of what we know now and what we have now passing away, we really don't have a grasp on that. And that's how come we live our life or uh, oftentimes in just the norm, just enough to get by, just the ordinary. Oh, but Jesus was coming by at an unusual time. Hear me, an era was about to pass away. A time and period of the ministry of Christ that they'd never be able to bring back again. Yes, it was going to usher in something great. It was going to be the ministry of the Spirit. For Jesus was telling them, I've got to go away for the comforter to, to come. But yet this was a very unique time in the history of the plan of God. Here was the Messiah walking in their midst. You could reach out and touch him. You could see him. Oh, what a, what a tremendous time. But he was fixing the end. And hardly any of them really had a grasp upon it. And so he sat down at supper with them. It was probably like all the other times. They were laughing. They were joking. And they were eating the, the, the food that was there. But if one of them would have stopped in a moment and looked toward his face, I can almost see it in the eyes of Jesus, such love. Oh, I can almost see it extra upon his face. A hunger for something deep just beyond that supper. Oh, how he wanted to bury his heart to them. But they, they, they were so missing often the things of God. How he wanted to pour himself out. When he would talk about the deep things, they still weren't able to really set it concrete in their mind what the plan of God was. And now he would maybe would like to stop that supper and tell him, Oh, just for a moment, will you look upon me and feel what I'm feeling? I'm about to go to Calvary. I'm about to die on a cross. I wish for somebody that I could share this with. But Peter and James and John and, and those that knew him so well, uh, they were saying, well, pass me another biscuit. I brought a piece of meat down there on that end of the table. Uh, hey, uh, Mary, could you give me some more gravy and, and all that would go on in the supper? But in the midst of all of that fellowship, something happened. The Spirit of God began to move. God began to move upon a woman by the name of Mary. God began to stir her heart up. Something was speaking to her. Something was calling her. Rise up, woman. Go back to the bedroom and pull out the alabaster box and come and break it upon the Lord. And she probably no doubt looked around and said, uh, I wonder why nobody else is feeling this. But the Spirit was prodding her on. Go on, Mary. Go ahead and do it and do it now. But uh, it would be so ridiculous to do this now in the midst of this supper. I, I don't even understand why I should do it. You may wonder why I'm preaching this today, but I'm going to tell you something. I have felt God move in an unusual way in my lives, and I've seen it move in other lives. 
I have never seen the presence of God in all my years of preaching. I have never seen revivals like I, I have felt the presence of God. Every preacher is talking about it. Is this something that's always going to be? Oh, no. I feel the footsteps of the Lord have made their way to the door of the church. Oh, if we only knew how he'd like to bear his heart unto us. He's not going to Calvary, but a new era, this era of time that we know now is about to pass away. Yes, it's going to usher in a great day. It's called the rapture of the church. Oh, yes, sir. Something's about to pass away, though, in the history of the plan of God. If we only knew, we preach about it, but do we really believe it? We are living in the last days of the ministry of the Spirit to the world. The great dispensation is fixing to pass away. And what do I feel? I feel the presence of Jesus coming to those who it began with in the beginning. In the end, he's coming to the Jesus name, apostolic, tongue-talking, holiness people. He is drawing nigh unto us. He has come to sit down with us. And how he'd like to bear his heart unto us. How he would like to talk to us. Oh, when I feel this, sometimes I see it on people's face. Pass me a biscuit. <laughs> yes, I've got a piece of meat down there on the end of the table. And oh, I feel God's presence here today. But I can see it on your faces. You're not ready for it this morning. Oh, God, oh, most of you aren't ready for it. You're laughing in, in the, oh, no, I'm not, but in the spirit you are. And, and we're feeding our belly, and, and we're looking for the things of life, and, oh, a finer car, and better clothes, and uh, what can I get, and what can I have? If somebody would stop, if somebody would stop, if somebody would stop at the supper table, and look at the eyes of the Lord, oh, we can read something neat in what they're saying. He's looking at every one of us. I feel the eyes of the Spirit upon us here this morning while you're thinking about your belly. And we are, oh, it happens so many times to all of us. And we're looking for more of this life and more pleasures and, and more money. But, oh, if we could stop and look on his face in the Spirit it's saying, I I've come by for something special. I I've stopped by for something that I, I want to do. Oh, I, I need you to get me ready for what's about to happen. Oh, in the Spirit of God, I, I feel it moving upon Mary's and, and special men in the Spirit that are saying, God, I, I know you have something out of the norm for me. I know you have something out of the ordinary for me. Father, I know that most of the crowd and the majority is not feeling it, but what is this prodding that I feel? It's God saying, go get the best that you have. That's that you've been reserving and saving for yourself. Go get it. Get it now. Bring it all for the body of Christ. Oh, we're not getting ready for Calvary. We're getting ready for a resurrection. We're getting ready for a ministry in the Spirit that's going to prepare Christ for His second coming. It's going to cost something. It's going to have to be paid a price for Jesus to come back again. But so many of us are sitting there and we don't even feel it. But oh, some are. Some young men... I can see it on some of your faces. Oh, yes, sir. You're going to be anointed of God. You're going to come out of this Bible school a flaming torch for the Lord because you felt that just little whiff of the Spirit. Oh, but others aren't doing it. Don't worry about others. It doesn't matter about them. Draw nigh to God. Others aren't feeling it. They want to go play basketball and football. And yes, we got to take care of this old body. But it's the Spirit that is calling. He has come by. He'll always, he's always been here. He'll always be here. But I say it won't be always the way you're feeling it. There's something special in the Spirit that I've never felt in my life. Something that is getting me up in the night till 3 and 4 and 5 in the morning. That is stirring me through the day. That won't let me go. That prods me and pushes me. And says you just don't know, son. What it's really all about yet. Oh, teach me, God. Teach me. Do down deep inside of my soul. God, tear it out. Move this world out of me. I don't care whether they're feeling or not. Let me feel it. 
Let me feel it. Oh, God, please, don't let me be set in their sin. Pass the grave in when the trumpet sounds. Let me be getting the best that I have. Breaking it before the Lord. Preparing him, not for death. No, sir, for a mighty second coming. While I'm preaching, I watch people. I watch the reaction. While the Spirit of God is moving, I see who is sensitive to it. Some of you, because, because of your attitude and way and lack of concern, you don't have a switch to turn the light on in your dark, blinded soul. But for some of you, I'm reaching for that light switch. If I can find it in the Spirit and flick it on, and your eyes be opened and you understand, this generation shall not pass away. This generation shall not pass away. When you see wars and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence, and you see trouble in the land, oh, know that it is nigh, even at the door. When you see the fig tree put it forth, it leaves. Know that I'm coming. Ha. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He's coming. He has come for a special touch and for a special fellowship. Does anybody here know that? Can you feel that at all? Is there anything inside of you that feels the plotting of the Spirit to wake you up, get you up away from the supper table? Go get the best that you have. My God, get it now. Bring it inside where the Lord is. Bring it upon the body of Christ. Somebody minister under the church of the living God. Somebody hear from the Holy Ghost. I refuse to be in a hurry, devil. Carnal flesh, I'm sorry if you don't want to hear it. But you go ahead and feed your faith. But somebody has looked upon the face of the Lord. Somebody has felt the prodding of the Spirit. Mary probably thought, but somebody else could do it. I, I'm in no place to do it, but God chooses the humble. God chooses the meek. God speaks to those whose heart has not lifted up in pride and exalted. That do not consider themselves more than they should. But are sitting there, oh, sensitive to God. Oh, the footsteps have stopped at your door. Why has he come? Why is God doing this to me this morning? If you only knew, he wants to bear himself unto us. Can anybody feel? Uh, can anybody feel? It's the final days of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I'm about to close the door on this era. We are a blessed people. What are we going to do with it? Uh, what are we going to do with it? Young men, I ask you, what are you going to do with it? It's something God has laid in our hands. Young women, what are you going to do with it? It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you everything. If you went to the room and got it, probably some thought, I wonder where Mary's going. Away from all this good time. Where are you going? We're having a great game of ping pong. I don't know. I just, I'm just going to go somewhere. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, man, you got you got time for a good football game today? Uh, I, yeah, I'll play sometime, but, but not today. I feel a rendezvous in the prayer room. Oh, if you only knew, young people, <laughs> how God hungers. Oh, he has come by for fellowship with those that mean so much to him, but there's so few to stand around and wait on God. Oh, how he longs for somebody 
earth to feel the hour and the urgency of this hour to get the best that they have. But he can't find many. No, he can't. Because they're too busy having a good time. There's no sin with having a good time. But the face of Jesus is trying to tell the church something. The eyes of the Lord, if we would look upon them, they're trying to speak something to us. Does God have to get up and shake us with trouble? Does God have to slap us with economic and financial woe? Get just a mere whistle of his feet, blow across our soul, and whisper to us. Move us, earth. Oh, does God have to put a pin in our mouth and yank us to the left like you would a horse and tear us to the right and kick us with spurs to get us to move for him? Or can it just by the nudge of his knee on our side, ah, just by the whisper of his spirit, stir us in the direction to go? God, give us men and women that can hear the Holy Ghost. That is willing, oh, no matter what the crowd is doing, I feel it inside. It doesn't matter how anybody else feels, it's just what the Lord feels about it. Your face is saying, All is well. Go ahead, Mary. Go on, Mary. Probably, Brother Insley, as she arose from that supper table and looked, he knew already where she was going. Maybe he just smiled. You never see him saying one word then. Maybe he just smiled. And none of the disciples caught it. They just kept on. Peter, James, and John just filling their belly fat. Oh, Mary went and got that. Maybe she stood there in the doorway and thought, I'm making a fool out of myself. I am making a fool out of myself. You let some student begin to pray a couple hours a day and people start wondering, wondering. Oh, what's that in there? Oh, I'm not talking about that you're more holy than anybody else. But I'm talking about digging in the carpet and start laying aside things. Oh, we're going to Bible school, man. We don't need, oh, no. Here's where you get down to the bedrock. Here's where you sleep it away. Here's where you get the rock and maybe get your feet on the foundation. Here's where you learn how to pray. You don't wait till you get out of Bible school. You do it in Bible school. While the others are having a good time. While the others are having a good time. You find the trail towards the prayer room. You lay there for hours on your face. And sit up down there at the nice little hall talking with the girls. And the girls with the boys. Somehow you found a little corner in that prayer room. And you're crying. What got into him? I don't feel anything. No. They just feel the spirit, the slight breeze of God. People are always going to look on people who hunger after God as fools. But you got to go ahead and make the step anyhow. I had to mock me, but I went ahead and made the step anyhow. I'm sorry. I don't mean to talk about myself in that way. But I know, I know myself better than I know you. I know what I went through. But, oh, God, there were others just like me that could feel it. This is it. You're called for the end time. Hey, man, you've got to hold on something. Hey, you're here. This is what it's all about. You have a ringside seat. Come on, Keith. What you going to do with it, boy? I'm going to get a hold on it, God. I don't care what it costs me. If it's the most prideful thing in my life, here it is. Call me a fool. Call me a fanatic. But, oh, there's a prodding in the spirit. Mm, there's a move in the Holy Ghost. This is not the norm. You hear me, young people? This is not the norm of the Holy Ghost we're feeling. Jesus is coming by for a special reason. For a special purpose. What's going to happen? Here is the scenario as it took place. Mary, finally, maybe the Lord looked up and saw in the doorway. I know what you're doing. It'll be all right. Mary walked in and she brought that expensive alabaster box. And oh, those who should have known, those who should have understood, those that should have been the closest to God, they were now looking upon her with skeptical eyes. 
They were wondering what in the world had got into her. Listen, I'm not preaching something far off. I'm not preaching about going off the deep end. I'm talking about living for God, the basics and the elementary. I'm talking about praying and fasting and being used in the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about this way out crazy. I'm talking about the supernatural power of God that's for the church today. I'm talking about miracles and signs and wonders. I'm talking about people being healed by the power of God. I saw a deaf mute just a few weeks ago healed by the Lord. I've seen legs that have crippled people healed by God. I'm telling you what God has for you and what God has for you and for the church in this final hour. It's here. It's here now. It's ours. But you're not going to get it feeding your face at the supper table. You're going to get it back in the back bedroom. Digging out something that means so much to you. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you everything. I'm afraid some of you are not willing to pay it. You're going to fade like the dew in the morning. But some of you are going to be sorry. Oh, you're going to hang in and make up your mind. I've been chosen for this special hour. When she came in, she went to the Lord. Then, this had never been done before. She was setting a precedent, and no doubt everything inside of her was quick. Break it upon the Lord. Nobody's ever done this. I'm going to make a fool out of myself. But she broke that alabaster box upon the Lord. It poured down his head. It dripped from his skin upon his garment. And when she did what she did, the smell of that perfume and the aroma began to fill I can almost smell it now. It fills every, every nook and cranny. Oh, and the low and the high. All of the ceiling, all of the floor. Everybody could smell it. Oh, when you do what you can, there's something that fills the tabernacle. There's something that fills your heart. There's something that fills your life. My God, listen to me. Do you want a life that's filled with the glory of God? Take the things that mean the most to you. Break it upon the body of Christ and the Lord in worship and in praise. I declare unto you, worship and praise will fill your life. It will thrill you. It will fill every part of your thoughts and actions. I'm telling you, you will be jammed back instead of being bored. Instead of being something that says, I'm tired and, and I'm always exhausted. You'll wake up in the morning with a thrill in your heart. Alive. Filled with the glory of God. Why? Getting ready. I'm getting ready. Woo! Hallelujah. It's not a boring thing to me anymore. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. He's about to come, and I'm about to go. It won't be long now. His eyes tell me. I said his face tells me. It's everywhere, sir. It's in the young people. It's everywhere. It's in all the tongue interpretations. It's in the prophecies. It's in the preaching. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. But a lot of people don't even really know it. They're setting back doing their own thing. But some are being the, bringing the best they have. And it will fill the house of God when they've given the best they can. And here's what happened. When those who did not fear God saw what had happened, the Bible said they began to mourn. I'll tell you something, young man. You may not want to pray, but you leave the brother alone to dance. <laughs> God help your soul to be in a Bible school and be calm, but people do. If that's the way you want to live, you just go ahead, but you keep your mouth closed. Let me tell you something, young lady. She may not be the most popular, and maybe you are. Maybe you'll mix it up a little bit. But if they want to see God, you just leave them alone. You just go your next step. I want you to know God will take care of those that want to love him. They began to murmur against her. You know what they were saying? This is too costly. This is this cost too much. Uh, that, 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 that's out of, out of his place. Man, she should have taken this and given it to the poor. That's what Judas said. But Mark put his finger on Jesus and said, 
He said it because he was a thief. What are you going to be? Are you going to give? Or are you going to be a thief? Are you going to come to this Bible school and do what you can? Are you going to be one that's always sitting back, saying, I'm privileged, blessed? Come on, Jesus, do something for me now. Come on now. Come on, Brother MJ. Come on, I ought to be pampered and baby. You are thief. There are saints that are like that. They'll always be thief in the service of the living God. They're sitting around always griping and complaining. Don't like this and don't like that. Oh, man, I don't like the food or I don't like the houses or I don't like the teacher or I don't like this. They're a thief. Mark them down as a thief. But, oh, if you can get a marriage with the spirit to love God, everything's just all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything's all right. Just they had their mind on something. He's coming. He's coming. I'm going to do what I can while I can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. What do you want? Do you want to get the use of God? You'll always be leading others astray. But if somehow in this Bible school you can get your head screwed on right and hear from the Holy Ghost, you're going to be a blessing. You're going to be a blessing. God's going to look on you in that day and say, He had done what He could. He had done what He could. He did the best He could with what you had. She took the things that meant the most to her and she gave it to me. your mark. You've got to do the spirit. You're always going to be the kind to take and never give. You're always going to be the kind to point your finger at others and make fun and laugh at them because of what they're trying to do. But i got a word for you. There's somebody greater than you that's a smile. Yes. I see him shaking his head up and down. Go ahead. It's all right. Come on. Get your best. It's okay. Come on. Step on through the door. Come on. Mm. Woo! I don't know about that behind. Come on. It's all right. Steal away and pray. I'll meet you there. Come on. Get it together. Oh. Get this out of the behind. Let's pray for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Go on, Judas. You'll always be trouble. Go on, Judas. You'll always have there's something to complain about. But Mary, she has done what she could. Let's pray. Let's really pray. Our hearts need to be open. Come on, let's pray. You're too quick to stop. You're too quick to stop. Come on, let God talk to you, young lady. My God. Let the word of God, let a light switch be put there in the wall of your heart. Come on, get wired up for the Holy Ghost and miracles. Come on. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Terrible to have a house with no light switches and no electricity. Come on, let the Holy Ghost wire you up here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is supernatural. This search is for miracles and the glory of God. Speak to my soul, God. Let's pray. Let's pray. We need God to come down. You don't need to hear from a man. You don't need to hear the speaking of a man called Brother Clark. We need to hear from God today. We need something from the Holy Ghost today. Let's pray, young people, let's pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name. In the name of Jesus, in the name. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray for a while. Come on. Learn how to wait on God. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Jesus, please, Lord. Please help me, God. Speak to me, Lord. Please don't let me be like those that day. Let me be a Mary. Let me be tender. Let me sit at the feet of Jesus. Let me hunger after God. Let me 
you hunger after God? Let me hunger after God. Oh, Jesus is filling through. There's some of you right now that are breaking your way on through to God. In the name of the Lord. Peace, Father. Oh, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Oh, God, do something this morning. Speak, God, to their hearts and the spirit. God, deal with them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Come on, young men, some of you quit so easy. You better learn how to wait on God. Come on, young ladies, that's it. God wants to bear his heart unto you. God wants you to hear what he has to say. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Is it going to be a memorial of praise or a memorial of ashes? What's it going to be of your life? In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands just one more time and tell him how much you love him. That's it. There is a supernatural move of God here this morning. Everybody, that's it. Lift your hands and call upon his name mightily. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. <laughs> Lord, I haven't loved you enough. Oh, Jesus. Help me to push back from the supper table and to find what means so much to me and bring it to you. In the name. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, in the name, in the name, in the name, Jesus, Jesus, In the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm only three quarters of the way through. But I feel God being with some of you so strongly. I could preach on, but it's dangerous. So some of us are we're so shallow and I'm afraid to let this pass by. I'm afraid you'll just sit down and you're going to lose what you're feeling. I feel God breathe and be this place. Is there a Mary that God is laying his hand upon that you'd like to bring it and break it before the Lord? I'm not talking about male or female. I'm talking about in the 
Spirit. It's such a deep, deep, undertold experience. Somebody that feels the prodding of God, maybe you'd like to kneel here in the front, and maybe you'd like to step out from the supper table and maybe walk down. And please don't, don't come with dry eyes. <laughs> Please don't come. Please like, comment, and subscribe.